Well, we're going to begin this morning in a little bit of a different way. Uh, and the transition's going to seem a little jarring. Okay, so everybody just take a deep breath and reposition yourselves. And we're now kind of starting something new. Okay, and it's uh, a little bit different. But we're going to begin this morning uh, with a uh, movie clip. This is from Shrek 2. Uh, if you know anything about Shrek, you know that uh, in the first movie he uh, ended up uh, with a, a, a loved one, a spouse, Fiona, and this is the sequel to that. Uh, but is Shrek's very best friend is Donkey, that's his name, and he happens to be a donkey, uh, and he's voiced by Eddie Murray. Uh, and so uh, Shrek and Fiona are on their way to the kingdom of far, far away. And uh, Donkey asks a question repeatedly. Sure. See, this is why this nobody, is why likes, no one ogres. likes ogres. All right, you're All lost. Right, you're lost. I'm gonna just stop talking. Finally. But this is taking forever. Shrek and ain't no in-flight movie or nothing. The kingdom of far, far away, donkey. That's where we're going. Far, far away. All right, all right, I get it. I'm just so darn bored. Well, find a way to entertain yourself. <sighs> <sighs> oh, for five minutes, could you not be yourself for five minutes? Oh. All right. Are we there yet? Yeah. Uh, you know, that's a question that so often we hear about or we uh, think back on our childhood days, you know. We, uh, everybody piles into the station wagon. We've got the, you know, the tent or whatever it is on the top and uh, the car's full of kids and they're always asking, you know, are we there yet, are we there yet? And it's kind of a question that everybody always wants the answer to. Even as adults, we grow up and we, we think, oh, are we there yet? Or are, have we arrived yet? Or what, you know, what lies in our future? And even though we attribute that phrase, are we there yet, to children, it seems that it follows us out of our childhood and into our adult years. Because there's an interesting thing that I think takes place, there's an interesting thing that happens to us, and that is that we don't really realize that we should be focused on the journey and not the destination. Because it is the journey where we become all that we can become. It is the journey where we experience everything in life that brings us joy and pleasure and awe and wonder and pain and sorrow. But it is the journey that is the stuff that life is made of. 
And if we are constantly focused on some destination that is in our future, we can easily miss the journey. Now, in the gospel text that I read a few minutes ago, the gospel of John, we have this remarkable story of the, the raising of Lazarus. And usually when that text is read, the focus is on the miracle. The focus is on all of the, the metaphor and the, the way that we can talk about resurrection and new life and second chances. And there's just a wealth of information that's available in that particular story that you could preach on if you wanted to. But I wanted to zero in on something that you've probably not noticed before teaching elements of this story in John's Gospel that are there, but they kind of need to be pointed out and brought forward. And they relate specifically to this idea of always wondering, are we there yet? Always asking the question, always being focused on some future event. If you remember during the story, both sisters, when they encountered Jesus, re reminded him in a nice way, but they told him, you know, if you had been around, Lazarus wouldn't be dead. He'd still be alive. If you had been here, if you would have arrived at your destination, my brother would still be alive. Jesus heard that Lazarus was ill, but he honored the process of the journey so much that he stayed an extra two days. And when he finally returned to Bethany, he discovered that Lazarus has been dead for four days. He's been in the tomb that length of time. And then he had this conversation with one of the sisters. It was Mary, and Jesus tells Mary that Lazarus will rise again. And she said, well, yeah, of course, we're all going to rise again in the last day, in that final destination, in that future time, some way, way out there, Lazarus will rise again. And Jesus says, no, the future is now. Lazarus will rise again. Where have you laid him? And they went to the tomb, and Jesus, in that moment, raised Lazarus from the dead. Now, I don't want to discuss the validity of this story or focus on the miracle or any of those things. What I want us to focus on is how Jesus was present in that moment. How he turned the tables on Mary a little bit and said, no, we're not talking about resurrection sometime in the future. It's not a destination that's way out there, way beyond where we can even imagine or we can even see but it's right here, now, in the present moment. So we tend to look at our futures quite often as destinations. Now if you think about this, you'll know that through your life there have been in times when you've been anticipating some event that's about to take place. It might be six months away. It might be six weeks away. It might be six years from now. But everybody has these things on their horizon that they're looking forward to. It might be a new position that you're working to get. It might be, uh, you know, you're saving for a new house. It might be a, a new automobile. It might be a wedding or a graduation. It might be the birth of a new child or a new grandchild. All of these things are things that are out there in our future, but we tend to look at them as destinations. And when we focus on that as a destination, it distracts us from what's going on right now in the present moment. When we look at our futures as destinations, we end up wandering through life wishing that we could arrive. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? No. It is the journey that provides us the substance of life. It is the journey that gives us that ability to process what is going on in our lives. It's the journey that enriches our lives. If we miss the journey, 
we also miss the opportunities that go along with that. When we miss the journey, we miss the opportunities. You see, it's the journey that defines our process of becoming. Think about that. All of us are in the process of becoming who we are called to be. All of us are becoming what Christ envisions for each one of us. All of us are becoming those faithful followers of Jesus. All of us are becoming what the scripture calls ambassadors of Christ. All of us are becoming those persons that are called to follow in the footsteps of the Jesus that we hold so dear. And if we're focused on some destination and continually in the back of our minds ask the question, are we there yet? Are we there yet? We're missing what's happening in the now. We're missing that opportunity to stay focused in the present moment. And it's that journey that allows us to grow close to the divine. It's that journey that builds spirituality. It is in that journey that gives us, grants us that access. So, are we there yet? Well, I hope not. Because, you know, if you think about it, when you arrive at a, journey, at a destination, when you arrive at where you want to go, the journey ends. And if the journey ends, then we quit growing. We quit developing. We quit experiencing new experiences. When the journey ends, it's kind of over. So are we there yet? I hope not. Now you can ask this question, are we there yet at a personal level? You can ask that at a corporate level. You can ask it of an institution. You can ask it of a church. As a church, are we there yet? Well, I hope not. Because we'll continue to pay attention to the present moment, to pay attention to the now, to not focus so much on the future that we miss the opportunity of what's right before us right now. Now, I want to tell you a little story about a practical example of what I assume took place. Now, I have to confess that this entire story is based 100% on assumptions because I was only five when the meat of this story actually took place. And when you're five years old, you tend not to think about things in you know, the particular way. But, uh, so it's based on assumptions, but it's also based on assumptions that I know to be true. Okay, so this is a, a photograph of the house that I grew up in. Uh, we lived in this house from the time I was five years old until the time I left home. So, you know, it was my house. I, you know, it, I was there pretty much the whole time. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, gee, that's a really big house. Uh, you're right. It was a really big house. And uh, essentially, if you think about it, think of it in terms of a fourplex. Uh, not a duplex, but a fourplex. And in the lower right-hand corner of the, the house, there was a living area. And in the upper right-hand part of the house, there was another living area. And in the photograph, you know, it's such a big house, it's hard to get all of it in one photograph. Uh, but what you can't see is there's a lower left-hand portion of the house. That was also another living area. And there's an upper left-hand portion of the house. This house was used as student housing for the college where my dad taught. Uh, and it came up for sale. Now I can only imagine the conversation that took place between my mother and my father when they considered buying this particular piece of property. Like I said, I was only five. And I never really had a conversation with them after the fact, you know, about what was going through their minds. But can you imagine them saying to themselves, you know, we really haven't arrived yet. I mean, you know, 
you've basically just started here at the college and you know we might get a raise from the public schools but we might not you know how that goes and here we are with five kids the youngest of which is five and boy is he a troublemaker and who what are we going to do with him you know and we just don't have any business thinking about buying a house of this size I mean how are we going to take care of it think of the maintenance how are we going to make the payments focused on some future destination, this house would not have ever happened. It wouldn't be a part of my life. But they realized that, okay, we can rent a portion of this. My family basically lived in half of the house and we had three other apartments that we rented out and uh, interestingly enough, those tenants almost became part of our family and we'd gather in the backyard and play volleyball and do you know all kinds of interesting and wonderful things but the point is that they would have missed this opportunity had they focused entirely upon a destination if they waited until they had arrived before they took action are you or were they there yet? No, they weren't there yet. But they went ahead anyway. Now I've heard it said that, you know, there's the really wealthy people and then there's not so wealthy people. And one of the things that distinguishes the really wealthy people from those that maybe aren't so wealthy is the, the really wealthy people, they have names for their houses. Well, when we purchased we, when my parents purchased this particular home from the college where my dad taught, it already had a name. And its name was Westlawn. And that name stuck. And we continued to call it Westlawn uh, to this day. We were not wealthy, even though we had a name for our house. But we were certainly rich. And we were rich because my parents had the vision and the wisdom to pay attention to the now and to not allow their focus to be distracted from a destination that was somewhere in the future. And they took action and they had the faith to know that all things will work out. Are we there yet as a church? Are you there yet as an individual? Are we there yet as a nation or as a country? Are your cousins and your grandkids and are, are they there yet? I hope not. I hope not. Because once you arrive, the growth, the opportunities, the journey ends. Focus on the journey. Focus on the present moment. Live in the now. And that, of course, is food for thought.